Welcome to the Pioneers Park Nature Center. My name is Jamie Kelly and I'm the naturalist here. Today we're going to take you around and look for wildlife, plants, and everything cool out here in the Nature Center. So the Nature Center is a wildlife sanctuary where animals can live and grow and survive out here. We keep the area open and provide good habitat for lots of living organisms. Come along with us to explore the Pioneers Park Nature Center. We're exploring habitats today. A habitat is essential for survival of plants and animals. In a habitat, you have to have food, water, shelter, and space. Behind me is our wetland habitat. What kind of animals and plants do you think live here? Ducks, geese, fish, muskrat, beaver. All of those are great examples of animals that live out here at the Nature Center. This here is a, a sample of some of the macroinvertebrates or the aquatic insects that live in the wetlands here at Pioneers Park Nature Center. So using a dip net, I have gone in, collected samples. I like to collect where there's mud and sticks and grasses, things that the little insects are gonna hide in and, and hold on to, because that's where they feel safe. And I can use things like big nets, but also just aquarium nets, a colander, whatever you want is gonna help you to go in and dip. So I'm gonna reach in here, this is my big dark sample, and look for some different insects, looking for things that are moving. Egg deposit, if you can see the, oh now he's moving, I can feel him crawling on my finger. <laughs> these jelly eggs. You just kind of see the little individuals in there. But that jelly helps to protect them, keep them hydrated in the water. So this is a damselfly nymph. So damselflies are very similar to dragonflies, uh, but damselflies, the adult form, is like a, a very thin um, body with wings that um, fold back behind them when they rest, whereas dragonflies, they rest with their wings out. Let's see here. This is one I like. This is a whirligig beetle. You can see where it gets its name from. Another one that's got a funny name are called water boatmen. If we look down in here, you can see these little critters. Looks like he's got paddles, little oars for swimming along beetles. Uh, we've got this water scorpion. It looks like an aquatic stick bug that lives in the water. Didn't find any dragonfly nymphs today, but they're definitely out there. These organisms, they are food for all the larger organisms in the water. Shorebirds, uh, different waterfowl, uh, larger frogs, fish, they're gonna feed on these organisms when they're in the water. Did you know some insects start their life in water? Let's look at the dragonfly life cycle. It starts with an egg, then a nymph, and then the adults. The eggs are laid in the water, the eggs hatch, and you have a nymph, which doesn't look like a dragonfly at all. It has six legs and looks more like an aquatic insect. It lives in the water, will eat things in the water and eventually shed its exoskeleton and a dragonfly will emerge. The dragonfly is able to fly off to hunt other insects. Do you know the frog life cycle? Frogs start out as eggs in water. They hatch and they're a tadpole. Eventually that tadpole will grow legs and their tail will kind of be absorbed into its body. So then it looks more like a frog. So it goes from an egg, tadpole, a froglet kind of is in between a tadpole and a frog, and then the adult frog. Canada geese are one of the most common waterfowl and actually animals that we see here at the Pioneers Park Nature Center. We see them almost all year long, although the ones that are here in the spring and summer may not be the same geese that are here over winter because Canada geese do migrate. 
When they come here in the spring, they pair up and Canada geese actually mate for life. So that means the same two geese will stay mated for the lifespan of those two geese, which is pretty cool. They build their nests on the ground, usually. We do have two Canada geese here that have built their nest on top of our prairie building for the last four years. It's really fun to watch them through the spring and hope that they have a successful nesting period and goslings hatch. When a Canada goose makes their nest, it's made up of plant material and also down feathers to make it nice and soft when those geese do hatch. They can lay up to eight eggs, although sometimes they might not lay that many. When the goslings hatch, within a couple of days, they're able to walk, swim, and feed on their own. They do stick with their parents through most of the summer, although they look different through the whole summer. When they first hatch, they're these fluffy little chicks, and they're yellow. And over the next few weeks and few months, they end up getting their adult plumage, which then they look more like their parents and are black, white, and kind of gray. Those goslings, then teenage geese <laughs> and young adults, will stay with their parents almost that next whole year. And when you see big flocks of geese around Lincoln or out here at the Nature Center, many times those are big family groups of geese, so they're related. So Canada geese are really interesting to see and have a lot of unique qualities, including their mating and life cycle. We're now in the woodland habitat at the Pioneers Park Nature Center. What kind of animals do you think live here? Remember, the animals and plants for a good habitat need to find food, water, shelter, and lots of space to spread out. So here, a lot of our trees provide food. They also provide the shelter for nests and even open cavities that some animals find as their homes, such as woodpeckers and even raccoons will hide out in open cavities. When we walk through the woodlands, sometimes it's hard to see all the wildlife that actually live here. But if you listen and take a second, you can hear lots that's going on. Just in that short time of listening, I heard some geese, I heard other birds calling, I even heard an insect buzz by me. So sometimes when we're out in nature, just taking a minute to stop, be quiet and listen to see what's going on will really help you understand what's out here living in the woodlands. At the Nature Center, birds are an animal that we have out here all year long. Some birds though, only are here for a short period of time during migration. Other birds are here throughout the whole year like the Canada geese that we see. Cardinals are also here all year long as well as blue jays. Woodpeckers are an interesting group of birds because unlike other songbirds, instead of singing, they make noise by drumming on trees. Woodpeckers are really cool birds because of the way that they look for food and where they live. So a woodpecker is going to live in a cavity in a tree, usually of a dying tree where it's easier for that woodpecker to make a cavity to live in and to raise their young. When they look for food, they drum on a tree to make insects and larvae underneath the bark move around. The cool part is that when they drum on the tree, it doesn't give them a headache. Their skulls are structured and their beak so to absorb all of that pressure as they're banging on a tree. And then they have a really long tongue that can go into that hole that they've created to pull out whatever food that might be in there. Their tongue is so long that not only is it in their mouth, but it stretches all the way behind their skull and wraps up inside their skull. It's long and sticky for them to find their food. One of the really important parts of an ecosystem and of any life cycle are decomposers. Decomposers are everywhere and they're essential for our wildlife um, and all habitats. Uh, I like to think of the decomposers as the FBI, fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates. And invertebrates are things that don't have backbones, so worms, roly-polies, spiders, things like that they all have a very important role within the life cycle. They're gonna decompose, breaking down dead things and turning it into soil. Right next to me is a tree that we can see that decomposition happening as it's turning into soil. New plants are growing in that soil from this rotting log. And those aren't the only living things that are out here. 
Let's turn this log over and see what we find. Ooh, there's new life. Oh, we've got some roly polies. Let's see if we can get them out there. They get called that because they roll up into little balls to hide or play dead. They're still down there foraging. There's a worm over here working through the soil. We can see on the log fungi, so mushrooms, uh, usually what we'll see are, we think of uh, the, the mushrooms that grow up out of the soil. However, they actually have uh, things that are living under the soil or in the rotting logs. So when we look here, we can see little strands of parts of our decomposers that are living here within our log. I don't see them, but I know there's got to be spiders and other things living in here that are eating this wood, feeding on the other insects that are living in here. A dead tree is full of life. So a life cycle, like, like it sounds, it's, it's a cycle. There, things happen. So animals are born, uh, they grow, they mature, they reproduce, they live on, they eventually die. Uh, when they die, we find evidence of them around. These bones are what's left after the decomposers. Uh, things like the bacteria and the invertebrates have eaten away the flesh, all the living tissue, and what's left behind is, is the bone. So we can find evidence of different animals that have lived out here. This may have been a, a raccoon that once lived out here. Uh, kind of a small jaw, it might be a young animal. Um, and we could potentially find evidence of what may have caused its death. We may not ever know, but that's just part of the life cycle. In the woodlands and all over the nature center, we can find other signs of life that give us clues about what's going on and can teach us about life cycles. Out here in the woodlands, I've found this seed pod. Have you guys ever seen a seed pod that looks like this? This one is from a tree called the Kentucky coffee tree. There's a long story about how it got its name, but it has to do with the seeds that are inside. If you rattle it, you can hear that there's something in there. I'm gonna open it up and we'll see what we can find. Ooh, here's one of the big old seeds. And we also noticed there's some goo in there. I've heard, I've never tried it, but I've heard that, 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 that this goo doesn't taste very good. And that helps protect the seeds from being eaten by mice and squirrels and other critters. So not only does the seed pod help protect the seed after it falls from the tree, it also, that goo in there, protects the seed from being eaten by other animals. Eventually, the outside of this pod is going to decompose, and the only thing left are gonna be these big, round seeds. When they drop to the ground, then, they will maybe grow another Kentucky coffee tree. Story behind how the Kentucky coffee tree got its name are because early settlers that came to America found these seeds inside these pods, grounded them up, and then put them in water, kind of like how we make coffee. So the tree then was named the Kentucky coffee tree. These don't taste like coffee, but the tree is still called that today. Another plant that we see all over the nature center, especially here in the woodlands, is this gooseberry plant. So right now you are able to see that the gooseberry plant is flowering. These little white flowers are hanging on the plant and pollinators will come to them to find food, um, get the nectar from them, like bees and butterflies. After the flower is on the plant, the next thing that will come is a berry, um, where it gets its name, the gooseberry. So most flowering plants, after it flowers, a berry comes, and then inside that berry is the seed of the plant. Many plants that have berries rely on animals to transfer those seeds that are in the berries somewhere else in nature and they do that by eating them. So when a little bird comes along, when once these berries come on the plant, they're going to eat the berry 
and fly away. It's going to digest and eventually come out the bird when the bird goes to the bathroom. And wherever the bird goes to the bathroom, there's a probability that another gooseberry plant is going to grow. It's kind of cool. The other cool thing about these gooseberry plants are these thorns that grow up on the stems. Now those thorns are an adaptation of this plant to make sure that larger herbivores, animals that eat plants, don't come and eat it. So it's going to protect it from being eaten by deer or maybe rabbits and allow those berries to develop so those birds can come along and find food. Pretty cool adaptation, pretty successful plant to grow out on a woodland. One of the cool things I've seen out here at the Nature Center is when a bird went to the bathroom in a cottonwood tree, had eaten gooseberry, and now we have a gooseberry plant growing in the cottonwood. It's pretty cool. When you're out and exploring nature, sometimes you don't see all the wildlife that actually is out here, but you can look for signs that they've been here, that they live here, and that they're surviving out here. One of the things that we look for are tracks, or footprints in mud and snow. It gives you a good idea of who can be here. Look for nests, so when you look up high in trees or even in small shrubs, you can look for compact nests of birds. Big nests made out of leaves, that's probably a squirrel. Again, tree cavities, if you see a hole in a tree and you have binoculars with you, take a peek inside. One time I saw a raccoon. Along ponds, you can look for areas where beavers have chewed down trees. Um, and also look for muskrat mounds in the wetlands as well. That'll be big piled up structures. It looks like just a big pile of debris, but that's where the muskrat lives. Well, keep on exploring. And even if you can't come out to the nature center, you can be a naturalist in your own backyard. Look for plants blooming, birds flying, insects buzzing. There's a whole world to explore out there.